Hey guys, it's Olga from Olga's Flavor Factory and I'm so excited to share this recipe. I've literally been planning to post this video for years. Today I'm making burrito bowls with cilantro and lime grilled chicken. It's so juicy, it's really flavorful. And then there's so many amazing toppings that go along with the rice. We're also gonna do cilantro lime rice. The cilantro lime chicken has the most amazing marinade and I use it for lots of other things, not just chicken. So go ahead and try it on lots of different things. The flavor of it is so good. We make this dinner a lot when we get together with our extended family. I make it all the time for guests. So chances are, if you came to my house for dinner, you probably had this at one point. And it's so easy that I often make it just for our family too. I love the versatility of it. I love that there's so many things you can do in advance and it's just one of those go-to dinners that never fails. Isn't this beautiful? I'm ready to dig right in. Let's get started so I can show you how to put it all together. We're gonna start with the cilantro lime chicken. So of course we need chicken and I'm using boneless, skinless chicken thighs. Then for the marinade, we're gonna need a whole lot of cilantro. You can also use other herbs if you want to. Then I'm using a poblano pepper. Poblano is nice and flavorful, but it's not too spicy, which is great because we usually have a lot of kids eating the food that we make. So we're gonna do one of these, but you can use jalapeno if you want to. Then we need a nice healthy handful of garlic, of course, and then a lime. So we're gonna need both the zest and the juice of the lime. You might need two limes actually, because sometimes limes are not as juicy and we need a lot of lime juice for here. And then of course, salt and pepper, olive oil, and then a whole slew of spices. So first of all, we're gonna use some coriander. This one is a little bit unusual, but it's very easy to find in most grocery stores. It's very earthy and warm. It's just a very lovely flavor. We're gonna use just a little bit, so don't worry. It's not gonna be overpowering at all, but it's really great for meat marinades. Next, we have cumin, and I think most of you are familiar with this one, so we're gonna use some of that. And paprika, paprika is another very popular herb. Look at this pretty color, it has a lot of flavor, and it's not spicy at all, so this is great. If you want it to be a little more spicy, you can add some cayenne pepper. You can also use some chili seasoning. And then you can also use mixes, like the cilantro lime seasoning blend. Then I love this onion salt. I'm sure you guys have seen me show this before. I use it in just about everything. It's great for any kind of savory cooking. I'm gonna roast the poblano pepper first. So I'm gonna cut it in half. That way it cooks on both sides at the same time. We're gonna save ourselves some time. So I'm just gonna cut it in half, put it upside down like this in a roasting pan or any kind of baking sheet and you can put it under the broiler or just go as high as your oven will go and stick it in there for about five minutes. Now it goes fast, so don't go too far, watch it. And then when it gets nice and hot and kind of like charred on the outside, it's good to go, just take it out and cool it. Now, if you don't wanna go through the process of cooking the poblano pepper, Here's a great shortcut, this Trader Joe's Hatch Valley Salsa. I love it. I always have some in my pantry and keep it in my refrigerator so I can add it to lots of different things. I add it to pico de gallo, guacamole, to rice dishes, marinades like this one. So it's a great shortcut ingredient to have and it tastes fantastic. So it gives you that pepper flavor. It's a little bit spicy and it just tastes really great. While the pepper is cooking, I'm gonna get the rest of the marinade ingredients and I'm gonna use my blender to blend it all together. If you don't have a blender, you can also use a food processor. If you don't have a food processor, use your knife and just chop everything up really small. So I'm gonna use a lot of cilantro and I absolutely love cilantro in here. We're gonna use cilantro a lot today in lots of different components of this dinner. And I'm just giving it a rough chop. You honestly don't even have to do that. I just like to and then put it in the blender. And you can also use parsley instead if you don't like cilantro. If you don't like parsley, then I feel sorry for you if you don't like fresh herbs because your life must not be very flavorful. So first I'm going to roll this lime on the counter. That way it's gonna burst the membranes inside and it's gonna be a lot juicier. So roll 
it as hard as you can on your countertop. Then I'm gonna use my microplane grater and just add the zest right in. So we're gonna zest almost all of this line. The skin of any citrus is where all the flavor is. That's the oil is in there and it has so much more flavor. And then we're gonna cut this in half and get all of the juice in there. Now watch this. I already squeezed this with my hands. Look how much more juice it's gonna get. You see that? I wouldn't have never been able to do that with my hands. Time for the garlic. So I'm gonna use the flat end of my knife. Just makes it really easy to peel. Just comes right out. Okay, that's good enough because we're gonna put it in the blender. Now we're gonna add all the spices, salt and pepper. Poblanos aren't very spicy at all, but jalapenos can be. And if you want it to be even more spicy, add it in with the seeds. That's where all of the spice is. So add it in with the seed and you'll have a spicy marinade. So we're just gonna throw that into the blender. All we have to do is add the olive oil and blend it all up. Mix it all together, and that's pretty much it. If you're in a pinch for time, you can put the chicken on the grill right now, but it's gonna taste a lot better if you give it some time to marinate. So I'm gonna transfer it to this container and put it in my fridge. And you can give it a few hours to marinate, or if you plan ahead and you don't go through life flying by the seat of your pants, you can marinate it overnight. It's gonna be fantastic. The flavor is gonna really penetrate the meat. It's gonna be so good. Trust me, it's so worth it. This marinade works for just about anything. It's fantastic on fish. It's fantastic on kebabs of any kind, on a steak. It's just really, really good. We love it. And as you can see, it's not hard to make, especially if you have a blender, which does all the work for you. So I'm just gonna close it up, let the flavors marry together and get better. And we're gonna get this on the grill a little bit later. Okay, let's get started with my favorite part of this entire meal. We're gonna do the pico de gallo and the guacamole. That's where all the fresh, amazing flavors come in. So we have a lot of gorgeous tomatoes and I'm just gonna, you know, feel it out and see how much I wanna use today. Then some avocados, green onion, now normally I also use either a red onion or a shallot, but I used it for something else. I forgot that I was gonna use it for this, so we don't have any, but that's okay. We'll just use the green onion. We have a little bit of garlic. I do like garlic. I don't like when it's overpowering, so we're only gonna use a little bit. We're also gonna use up another poblano. <laughs> Lots of cilantro and more lime. So the cilantro and lime, I'm also gonna add to the rice, going with that cilantro lime theme. So I'm gonna set aside some of that to be added later to the rice when I'm cooking it, but we're gonna get started. Last avocado going in, now I'm gonna smash it up with a fork and they're nice and tender so it shouldn't be too hard. You know what else works really well for this? A potato masher. But I made my kids banana pancakes this morning so it's in the dishwasher. Anyway, I'm just gonna smash it up with a fork. You can make it as fine as you want or leave it a little chunky. So this is about how I like it. I like it to be a little bit chunky. So I like this consistency. I'm gonna do the lime next, that way I can add it to the avocado so they don't turn brown too quickly. So I'm going to roll it on the counter again, both of them. And then I'm going to add some of the lime zest to the rice, not to the guacamole or the pico de gallo, but to the rice so it has that lime flavor in there. 
So I'm gonna save whatever I'm gonna put in the rice in this bowl. So just the lime zest, and then I'm gonna put the cilantro in there as well. Okay. So I'm gonna add the lime to this bowl here with the avocado. where I'm going to do the pico de gallo as well. Nice. I'm going to save this lime and add it to the rice later on and also cut it into little pieces so we can squeeze some fresh lime juice on our burrito bowls as well start working on these tomatoes and I personally like to take the seeds out because otherwise it's gonna make the pico de gallo and the guacamole watery and I just put it into a bowl right here beside me and then I'll chop it up cutting up the last tomato and this one is going to go in the guacamole so I want it to be a little bit smaller and also if you make guacamole in advance don't add the tomato until you know, right before you're going to serve it otherwise it's going to make it watery so I do this only if I'm going to serve it pretty quickly after making it Plus, not only does it make the guacamole watery, the tomatoes are gonna wilt and get kind of mushy. So I prefer when they're nice and fresh. Look how much juice there is. If I didn't take out the seeds, this is how much juice would be floating around in our pico de gallo and guacamole. I'm actually only gonna add the garlic to the guacamole. I'm not gonna add any to the pico de gallo. And I'm gonna just grate it because I have this microplane grater here anyway and fine. Pavlano pepper, I'm going to put that in both as well. Once we chopped up the cilantro, you see it's not as much of it as it seemed, and it's gonna go in both the guacamole and the pico de gallo plus the cilantro lime rice. And for me, they don't taste right at all if you don't have fresh cilantro in there. toppings are almost ready. The last thing I have to do is prep the corn, which is gonna go on the grill. All I'm gonna do is drizzle some olive oil on it, season it with salt and pepper, and then my husband's gonna get it on the grill along with the chicken. I don't usually make guacamole more than a few hours before we're gonna serve it because it oxidizes and turns brown, not pleasant to look at or eat. What I found that works the best is, first of all, to use lime juice. The acid in there is gonna help to keep the avocados from turning brown. And also one more thing is to take some plastic wrap. We are going to press the plastic wrap right on top of the guacamole to keep as much air out of there as possible. If you have some storage containers that are airtight, those work really well too. I have a few Rubbermaid ones. Those are excellent. So you can do that as well, but I would still recommend putting the plastic wrap right on the guacamole. It keeps the air from, uh, from oxidizing it, and that way it'll stay nice and green longer. Then right before you're gonna serve it, give it a mix and it'll kind of, even if it gets discolored a little bit on the top, the bright green from the bottom will help to mix it up and it'll still look nice and green again. Snack break, I blame it on Sergi. He's the one who got the chips out. Yep, can't resist. Mm -mm -mm. 
Cilantro lime rice is next on the agenda and I really like long grain white rice. It's very easy to make, but you can use any rice that you like. Before I started, I boiled some water so it's nice and hot and ready to go. I'm gonna melt some butter in my pot, then add the rice and the salt. Mix it together with a wooden spoon until it gets aromatic. It kind of smells a little bit nutty, slightly toasted. You don't want it to get brown, but at that point, you're gonna add the boiling water and keep your lid ready to go because it's gonna boil right away. So you wanna cover it with the lid and turn down the heat to as low as it goes. And you're gonna cook it at that low, low simmer for about eight to 10 minutes. It depends on your stove, your rice, whatever, but about eight to 10 minutes, then you can open it up. Most of the water should already be absorbed by the rice and then just fluff it up with a fork and add your fresh herbs if you're using them, our lime zest and lime juice that we're gonna be using today, and that's it. Okay guys, so real life, the lighting at the grill is awful. So I'm gonna explain what Sergi's gonna do at the grill and then we're just gonna film it real quick cause a storm is coming. So we gotta get this done fast. He preheats the grill for about 15 minutes, gets it clean and then he's gonna put the chicken on. Now you wanna cook the chicken until it gets golden on both sides and it should reach about 165 to 170 if it's chicken thighs and if it's chicken breast, 160 to 165 and you would use your instant rate thermometer for that. And the corn doesn't take that long on the grill at all, so we're just going to get it charred on all sides, nice and golden, but don't overcook it because the kernels are gonna get all shriveled up if you grill it too long, and that's it. I've got my toppings all ready to go, so it's time to start assembling everything. So I'm gonna cut the corn off the cob. Ooh, it's still kinda hot. And then we'll slice up the chicken so it's easier to eat. I like using this big cutting board because the corn just flies everywhere when you cut it. Oh wow, it's so perfect. It's still juicy, but it has some of that grilled flavor in it too, so it's gonna be perfect. Whenever I serve this, we usually set this right over here on the island or at the table. And I like to set it up the way people will assemble it. So rice first then the chicken, and then we're gonna do all of the toppings after that. So the corn, pico de gallo, lettuce, guacamole, and then also cheese and sour cream. And then people can just go and assemble it and add whatever they like and however much they want it. These are my favorite bowls because they're nice and shallow, but they have the sides to keep all of the contents from falling out. This is great. We're gonna get the rice on the bottom and then add all the toppings.
Go to Olga's Flavor Factory to get the printable recipe and I'll have more ideas of other topping options you can use. For example, you don't have to make guacamole and pico de gallo. Sometimes I just cut up some fresh avocado and tomatoes and that's it. Or I'll make a fire roasted corn salad instead. So if you want it to be faster and not make them from scratch, you can always adjust and make different toppings or sauteed mushrooms. I'll have all those details on my website and different protein options and recipes that you can use for those. So you have lots and lots of endless opportunities to change it up and switch up the flavor of this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.